Okay, so what's actually happening when you apply potential difference across a conductor like this? So firstly, the electrons are in random motion. But once you apply a potential difference, they start to accelerate towards a positive terminal. But you see the positive ions here, the lattice ions, are constantly vibrating. And because they're vibrating, the electrons are going to collide with them, and they eventually reach a constant drift velocity. Okay, we saw that provided the temperature does not change, according to Ohm's law, the potential difference in the current are directly proportional. So if you double one, you should double the other. And this is what you'd expect, for example, with resistors. The diagram shows a section of a copper wire with a diameter of 1.2 millimeters. I'm going to go ahead and use that to work out the cross-section area, which gives me 1.13 times into minus 6, where I've converted it from millimeters to meters, and I've divided the diameter by 2 to get uh, the radius and then squared it. Okay, we've got electrons flowing through it at a drift velocity of 3.5 times 10 to the 4 meters per second because that's the speed towards the right as shown in the diagram. In copper, the number of delocalized electrons per unit volume uh, represented by the letter N is 8.5 times 10 to 28 per meters cubed. Okay, this number here, the number of delocalized per unit volume is what we call the charge carrier density. It just simply tells me how many delocalized electrons inside this, uh, in, in a given meter cubed, which can carry the charge and carry the current, basically. Okay, so we're going to use that in a minute. Calculate the current. Okay, so current we know is the rate of flow of charge. So I is equal to Q over T. So we're going to figure out how much charge in coulombs is flowing past per second. Okay, so I want to figure out how much charge is inside this volume here. Okay, so let's figure out the volume, and then we can multiply it by this number here, which will tell me how many electrons there are inside that volume. To get the volume, I need the cross-section area, which is 1.13, times that by 10 to the minus 6, and I need to multiply that by the length. So the problem is I don't have the length. However, in problems like this, what's useful is to just let time equal 1 second. Okay. So if I let that time equal one second, I multiply the speed by one second, I can get the length of this. Okay, it's going to be 3.5 times 10 to the minus 4. So I'm going to multiply by that length, 3 times 10 to the minus 4, knowing that that's how much distance the electrons travel per second. So I've got the volume now. I'm going to multiply it by the charge carrier density here, which is 8.5 times 10 to 28. That's how many there are in a meter cubed. Okay, so I've multiplied this. Now at the moment, I've got the volume times the charge carrier density, which gives me the total number of electrons. But I want the total charge inside in coulombs. Okay, so this needs to be in coulombs. Okay, so what is that in coulombs? So I know that this is the number of electrons. I need to multiply this by 1.6 times 10 to the power of minus 19 coulombs, because that's how much charge each electron has. So I've multiplied the total number of charge by the the charge of each electron, and that should give me 5.38 coulombs per second, because I'm dividing it by the time um, one second here. So that is my current. Okay so, okay, so basically in the last question, I derived this equation here. So I said that the current is going to equal the charge carrier density, which is the number of electrons per unit volume, times the charge of each charge carrier, which is in this case the electron, so it's going to be 1.6 times 10 to the power of minus 19, but it doesn't have to be this, depends on what's carrying the charge, times the drift velocity in meters per second, times the cross-section area in uh, meters squared.